Orville Dam begins to fail when lake levels reach 908 feet. Seems a little hard to believe, but this is information that comes directly from their documents and from information they provided in their press conferences. They don't like to make the information so clear, but uh, we've provided all the sources, links, and information so you can see it at our potterblog.com website. Uh, you'll see that at link to that information in the uh, bottom of the video. But uh, the short of it is, is that Oroville dam failures will begin at the emergency spillway when lake levels reach 908 feet. Same goes for the main spillway. At 899 foot lake level, it only takes six inches of rain in 21 hours to reach the 908 foot failure point. Basically that means if the dam is full and impending going over the emergency uh, spillway, it only takes uh, six inches of rain in the 21 hour period to pop the levels up to 908 feet where the uh, emergency spillway and the main spillway will start to fail. Another important area of note is uh, no risk ass assessment has been, form has been performed on the unreinforced lower sections of the emergency spillway. Uh, the emergency spillway no longer has capacity to be a redundancy for the main spillway. The emergency spillway can now only handle 100,000 uh, cubic feet per second flow rate. It was 450,000 cubic feet per second. Uh, the, the hillside actually failed when only 12,000 cubic feet per second were go was going over the hillside. The main spillway can now only handle 269,000 cubic feet per second flow rate. It was 301,000 cubic feet per second. Oroville Dam can no longer survive the maximum possible flood. That's a, back in the 1957, that was calculated out to be at an 1800 year flood level. Basically, in 1957, they expected that once every 1800 years, such a flood would occur. Oroville Dam cannot handle the standard project flood when lake levels are above 848 feet. Global warming will make the 1800 year maximum possible flood occur more frequently. Global warming will make the 440 year standard project flood occur more frequently. No risk mitigation work has been done on either the spillway gate or the Hyatt powerhouse. And downstream levee failures will occur when the release rates exceed 150 cubic feet per second. Now all of this data above assumes that Oroville Dam will function 100% as claimed by the California uh, Division of Water Resources. Uh, we question the veracity of this 100% dam operations claim for the following reasons. One, even after massively reinforcing the top half of the emergency spillway, the hillside is still so unstable the spillway flow rates had to be dropped by 80%. That's the 450,000 cubic feet per second to 100,000 cubic feet per second. Oroville Dam authorities have shown an inability to problem solve real time as proven by their 2017 decision to use the emergency spillway despite an obvious eroding hillside, which led to the next issue. And that is, is the Oroville Dam authorities have had an inability to recognize life-threatening situations until the last possible moment, as evidenced by declaring an emergency evacuation after continuous claims of safety just moments prior. So you would think that you would that they would realize, hey, this hillside's rotting away when the main spillway's going over it. Uh, maybe we ought not use that emergency spillway, which has even less protection. But we'll just tell everybody it's safe and that they have nothing to worry about. And then slowly the water goes over the emergency spillway and they go, oh crap. And then they have to make an emergency evacuation announcement. They don't have the ability to solve problems on the fly and to recognize danger when it's right in front of them. Moreover, in an Orwellian maneuver, Oroville Dam renamed the emergency spillway into the auxiliary spillway after its reuse resulted in that massive emergency evacuation. This renaming shows that they will place and push a false appearance of safety above actual safety. Four, news organizations were complicit in renaming the emergency spillway to the auxiliary spillway. They didn't question it. 
Five, during the recent low flow main spillway usage, we noticed an anomaly possibly affecting future Hyatt powerhouse operations. We'll have more to that in a future video. Six, insufficient live main spillway testing has been done despite unusually high lake levels. Seven, their risk analysis underestimates risks as all risk events are treated as separate and not interrelated. Now, here we'll go into some of the detail if you're interested. Uh, we have links to the sources here, but we can show you where we came up with this stuff. Uh, for example, here's the media spillway briefing. This is the first time one they've said that the emergency spillway has a capacity of only 100,000 cubic feet per second. Uh, listen to this closely. What's full functionality of the emergency spillway? It's been reconstructed to handle flows of 100,000 cubic feet per second, but Joel spoke to the comprehensive needs assessment that DWR has underway, um, and that will be looking at the full, f the entire facility and reassessing um, what total flows we need for long term. Now and they have to reassess that because they can't meet the maximum possible flood, and they can just barely meet the probable flood rate. Now, you can take that 100,000 cubic feet per second information, and here's the all-important chart. Let me zoom out on this a little bit. There we go. This chart is from the original dam operations uh, information, and what it shows you is the height of the uh, water level, and the uh, capacity of the spillway changes, this is the emergency spillway, changes with the height of the water level. Same way with the main spillway. And so what we see here, the limitation of the emergency spillway at 100,000 cubic feet per second occurs right here at this little red dot, and that's at 908 feet of water level. You can see where the spillway doesn't have any capability below about 900 feet because uh, water's not going over the top of the weir at that point. The main spillway is about 269,000 cubic feet per second. It's also at this 908 foot mark. Now back when the dam was first made, the emergency spillway went all the way up to 450,000 cubic feet. And the main spillway went over up to basically just about 300,000 uh, cubic feet per second at a lake level of 900, 920 feet. Uh, 922 feet takes it over the top of the dam. And so what you see here is that the emergency spillway at this point back in the day was rated to actually handle all the flow uh, from the main spillway too. So the emergency spillway at this point uh, uh, used to be rated for uh, to be as a work function as a redundancy for the main spillway. That's no longer the case. Of course, they were completely wrong about all the geology of the mountain. And once, this spill, once the emergency spillway hit about 1,200 cubic feet per second, the uh, entire hillside started eroding away. In terms of the uh, lake level probabilities, the, the uh, probability of the maximum flood occurring and the, uh, the standard flood occurring, it comes from this chart. Exceeds frequency per 100 uh, years, uh, lake level. In some of their meetings, uh, they like to claim that uh, the maximum possible flood uh, thing is, a th is a, I think they said, a million years out. It's impossible. Well, it actually is only, uh, comes in right about here. And that is at uh, 1,800 years. And again, this was based off 1957 data back when climatologists still believed that a uh, ice age was coming and the world was going to be drier. So how often does this occur now? You know, who knows, but uh, I'm sure in California they, they think it's a lot less than 1800 years. So it's, it's not a good situation at, uh, at Oroville Dam. But uh, this helps make it a little bit more understandable. They don't seem to want to give people information in terms that uh, people can readily understand it. But uh, according to their data and all their information, once the uh, lake level reaches 908 feet, 
both the emergency spillway and uh, main spillway have uh, gone beyond their capacity to survive. And since they actually haven't done a risk assessment on the lower level of the uh, emergency spillway, uh, it's probably much less than that, be our opinion, especially since we know for a fact that the hillside cuts away at a mere uh, 1,200 cubic feet per second. So, good night, sleep well.